all liveliness in this universe, everything that we witness and all that surrounds us, on this planet and outside, the earth we live on, the star that keeps us alive, and most importantly, the bodies that we inhabit and our consciousness within that all together we call life only exists because of previous generations of parent stars that forged new atoms and new elements that later erupted in one of the most spectacular explosions known to the universe and spread the remains as seeds of everything across the whole of cosmos to make all that there is. Although knowing the violence of the event that occurs when a star goes supernova, could it shower earth with its remains? Well, let's take a look at the closest star to us, our Sun. We know that it will endure a different, a slightly less intense fate, because in astronomical sense, our Sun is too small for such an event as a supernova. In about 5 billion years, it will use up all its remaining hydrogen and begin to fuse helium as fuel instead which will cause it to expand 100 to 1000 times its size and form a red giant star, which will swallow Mercury, Venus and possibly expand big enough to submerge the Earth as well. After a few or many thousands of years, the Sun will shrink back and become a white dwarf, roughly the size of Earth, and live out its remaining days calmly until it fades out into the darkness of our universe. It is crazy to think that our sun, that produces incredible energy and forces large structures to an orbit, such as planets that are many times larger than our own Earth, and then to say it is still not massive enough for a supernova. And we think as humans, we are so powerful. But let's pretend that our sun beats all odds and at the end of its life it would go supernova. Would the sun send its search remains crashing into our atmosphere? And would we see raindrops landing made out of elements such as gold or platinum? Well, no, not even close. The most likely case would be that it would be us that would become the raindrops of some foreign body in the distant future, as our planetary guts would be flying in every direction across the whole of galaxy. But anyway, Let's imagine, if our star supernova, at the time of the occurrence, Earth would not realize it that quickly, because of the distance between our planet and the Sun, as it would take the light around 8 minutes to reach us. So our planet and whatever life forms that may still exist then, would unknowingly be living out their last moments, until suddenly they would be presented with the biggest and greatest fireworks show of their lifetime, generated from our collapsing Sun and shortly after be quickly shredded to pieces with all the remaining planets in our solar system from the intense outburst of the shockwave and radiation traveling close to the speed of light. For Earth to survive such a catastrophic event, or to avoid any real harm, it has to be at least 160 to 200 light years away from the explosion. Anything closer and it would risk being disturbed by the shockwave or a large dose of gamma radiation which both would be quite unpleasant for Earth and perhaps cause a mass extinction. Fortunately for us, we live in the Orion Spur, which is a fairly calm neighborhood within our Milky Way galaxy, about 25,000 light years away from the center and about 25,000 light years away from the edge. Here there are only around 75 stars within a 20 light year radius, and exploding stars are not that common. The last known supernova in our galaxy occurred around 110 years ago when a star named G1.9 plus 0.3 detonated more or less 28,000 light years away from the Earth. Sadly, we were unable to observe the event from down here because of dusty regions in space blocking our view. But let's take a look at an existing star named IK Pegasi which is currently 150 light years away from us and located in the constellation Pegasus. It is the closest star candidate to Earth to go supernova. This star is not that significant, and it also kind of fails to stand out as special or rare within our large catalog of stars in this galaxy, 
except for a few aspects, such as that it is a binary star system and is a few times more massive than our sun. But it has significance to us, because it is currently closer than the safe distance and if it were to explode now, it could cause severe harm to Earth. But luckily, the star is moving away from us and is predicted to only explode in about 5 million years, so by that time we will have escaped far out of harm's way. But once IK Pegasi does supernova, the Earth will witness an incredible brightness from that region of space as it might possibly outshine the full moon and be visible at daylight and stay there for a few weeks or a few months until it fades out. But the chances of Earth being dusted by a dead star's material in the future is extremely low, but it has happened before. As far as we know, it has happened twice. On the moon. Between 1969 and 1972, Apollo 12, 15 and 16 missions brought back over 700 pounds of lunar material to Earth and once they were examined, amongst these samples, scientists found radioactive iron 60. This element could not form naturally on the moon and also on Earth, but it is mainly linked to being created in a star's core. Using the half-life method to understand the age of the material, they found that there must have been two collisions. The first one being 2.3 million years ago and the second 1.5 million years ago. As the origin of the location of the material is still unsure and debated, the remains may have possibly traveled many trillions of miles through the vast empty space for possibly hundreds or thousands or even millions of years to come across our solar system. In 1999, in the Pacific, Atlantic and Indian Oceans, scientists found the same star stuff that has also crashed on the moon. As the collision occurred a few million years ago, some scientists theorized that the radiation from all the deposits possibly played some part in the evolution of life. This led to some say that this could have possibly affected early human ancestors too. The seeds of our universe were too late to contribute to our patch of space and possibly were or possibly were not successful in other places too. But somewhere in total void of nothingness, there is still long lost family members of the same star that were separated at birth, traveling alone, searching for a place for them to declare home and to impregnate our galaxy with new stars, new planets and hopefully new life.